so excited to show you how to make these adorable baby pants that are crocheted, but they look knit. They're stretchy. They're so cute. And they're actually really simple to make. Um, this is made in rows, so we will not be working in the round for this. Um, there's one seam on the back. You can kind of notice where it's at. When it's worn, it's really hard to tell where that seam is at. It hides quite nicely. And then we have a cuff. Now you can adjust this pattern if you want. If you want a little bit more width, it's really easy to add. Um, I designed this with the cuff. If you don't want the cuff, you can do half the amount of uh, single crochet stitches in the back loop at the bottom here, but I thought it was really cute to have a cute little cuff on the bottom of these little tiny pants. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this in a size for just the pants. Uh, you might see that I also have a tutorial available to make these into more like a romper overall style. But today for this particular video, we're just going to focus on creating pants and the construction of those. So what you will need today is some yarn. For these, I use the Color Theory um, Lion Brand yarn. I adore this yarn because of how well it mixes and matches with each other. The tones are just fantastic. Um, so I will be making, I believe I'm going to choose this color to make on camera today, but I've made it. This is the newborn size. I'm going to show you a little bit in a construction of the zero to three month size. And on camera, I believe I'll be making about the six month size. You will also need a four millimeter crochet hook, some stitch markers handy, make it really easy when you're working in rows, a needle to weave in those ends and scissors to fasten off the yarn. So let's go ahead and get started making these adorable little pants. So for this newborn size, I used the color Moonbeam, which was really, really cute. And then for the zero to three month size, I went with the ivory, which I love as well. All these colors are fantastic. But before I slip stitch this one together, I wanted to show you what these look like when we're making them. And that way you know where we're starting and where we are headed. You will see in the schematic of this pattern, I also have this shape drawn out just so you can visually see what you're doing because sometimes it's hard to imagine the flat shape that you're making. So this is what we are making flat and then it folds into pants. So we're going to start from one edge, making a, a long chain. We're going to work uh, some single crochet in the back loop only down here and up here to make it a bit tighter for the cuff and the waistband. And then half double crochet in the back loop for these. In the center, we'll be doing a section for like the gusset so that we have a little bit more space there. It's more comfortable to wear. And then we'll be doing another stretch where we're just doing rows, repeating rows. And then at the end, we're going to add a gusset for the other side of the pants. So these don't really have a front and back per se. They work great. And then this is what happens. We create this flat starting at one side and we're working this way in rows. And then when we have this piece done, all we have to do is fold this in and fold this in. And there we have our pair of pants. So we will be seaming all the way down here to this point, And then we'll continue to seam down one leg. And then we'll go ahead and seam up the other leg and then across the crotch area. And that's what creates the pants. But we're making them flat. I know right now this seems extra long, but that's because I haven't flipped up that cuff. So once you seam it and flip up that cuff, that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? So this is how we are going to construct these pants. So I'm going to be showing the size six month on camera and we're going to go ahead and do a long chain and get started and make this section first. And then we'll work this uh, center section, this first crotch section, and then we'll do the second section and then we'll do this section again and then we'll fold in and seam. It's really quite simplistic with a really, really cute finished look for baby pants. I adore these. So for this six month size, I'm going to go ahead and create a slip knot and then place that on my hook. And I'm going to be chaining 85 stitches. Now, whatever size you're doing, you're going to follow similar instructions. Just the amount of chains will be different. So for the size six month, I'm going to chain 85. So now that I've chained 85, I'm going to start by doing a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And it's never a bad idea, especially when we're getting started to mark the first stitch of our row. 
I'm also going to show you some tricks to make this really easy so that you can watch TV and not have to count these single crochet stitches at the beginning and the end of your row every single time. So I've done my first stitch and I'm going to be doing a single crochet into each of the first 10 stitches. So we're going to single crochet the first 10. And now for this size, I will be doing a half double crochet into the next 58 stitches. After working the half double crochet for 58 stitches, I have 16 chains left and we are going to single crochet into these 16 chains. So now that we've worked our very first row, which we did 10 single crochet stitches, 58 half double crochet stitches, and then 16 single crochet stitches, it's time for us to turn our work. And this is where grabbing a few stitch markers comes in handy because we are going to chain one, which I've already done, and we're going to be working into the back loop only for the remainder of this pattern. If you don't know what the back loop only when we, is, when we look at the top of our stitches, we'll see they're in a V shape. Now, when we are entering our stitch normally, we would enter through that entire V shape, so both strands. But when we're working in the back loop only, we only want to enter our hook through that back strand and not the front. So that's what we will be doing for each stitch. We'll be inserting our hook into that back loop only. So I've chained one, and in the back loop only, we are going to single crochet 16 stitches. Now you can go ahead and mark the first stitch of your row because that's never a bad idea, especially as we build this up. Eventually you may not need to mark the first and the last stitch of your row, but just until you get used to recognizing where those stitches are, you don't wanna add any extras or forget any stitches. So now I'm going to single crochet the first 16 stitches in this row in the back loop only. So now that I've single crocheted in the first 16 stitches, if you happen to have an extra stitch marker laying around, go ahead and mark the 16th stitch, so that single crochet stitch. That's because we're going to be working the same pattern again and again, row after row. And if you don't want to have to count every single time you get to this point that you have 16 stitches, you can place a marker right here and you'll know from this marker on those 16 stitches will be in the single crochet in the back loop only. Now for the next 58 stitches, we are going to be half double crocheting in the back loop only. So I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only for the next 58 stitches across. Now after half double crocheting the back loop only for 58 stitches, I have 10 stitches left in this row and those are going to be done in the single crochet in the back loop only. And if you want to, you can grab another stitch marker and mark where you're starting your single crochet stitches for this group of 10 for the waistband. Now, if you really want clean edges, this is not something you have to do. I just want to give you a quick tip. For the very first and the last stitches of each row, you can single crochet through both loops only. It's not a massive difference, but it does make these edges a little bit cleaner if you don't want to work the back loops on the first and the last stitch of each row. Completely up to you. Now, I know this feels like a lot, but now here's where it gets really, really simple. We're going to turn our work. And now we're going to be working the single crochet stitch for the first 10 stitches in the back loop only, and then the half double crochet stitch for 58 stitches or between our markers, and then the single crochet stitch in the back loop only for the last 16. So we're doing the entire row in the back loop only, doing 10 single crochet stitches, 58 half double crochet stitches, and 16 single crochet stitches. And then when we turn, we'll be starting with the 16 stitches, then the 58, then the 10. So that's all it is back and forth. 
So you'll be repeating rows two and three for a total of 30 rows. This is the section we'll be doing. So we'll get to this point later, but the first 30 rows are just simply repeating rows two and three ending on an even row. So create this section and then come on back. So now that I have 30 rows, we just have this piece of fabric and now we're going to do a little bit of shaping between the legs. So we're just going to be making a, a, an area and not working the entire row for the next three rows. So here is the rows for between the legs, the first section. We're going to go ahead and chain one and do a back loop only single crochet into the first 10 stitches. So in order to do this, we are starting from our top waistband. If you are starting at the 16 stitches on this side, you're on the wrong side of the fabric and you need to recount your rows. You should be starting this row where you're doing the 10 single crochets in the back loop only. Now that I have my 10 single crochets, we are going to half double crochet into that back loop only for 28 stitches. So we won't be going all the way across the row. We're simply going to half double crochet in the back loop only for 28 stitches. So now that I've worked the 10 single crochets and then the 28 half double crochets in the back loop only, we are going to turn. We are not going to work the rest of this row. We're going to turn, Go ahead and chain one. And then we will be doing half double crochets in the back loop only for 28. And then we'll single crochet in the back loop only for 10. Now for row three for between the legs. And this will be our last row for this section. And we're just repeating row one, but we're not going to turn when we get down here. We're going to continue on to the second section of the baby pants. So I'm going to do the single crochet in the back loop only for 10, half double crochet in the back loop only for 28, and then we'll be done with this section, but we're not going to turn. So now after doing row three of that rows for between the legs, we are going to be doing some chains when we start our second section. So for this size of pants, I'm going to be chaining 47 stitches. So now that I've chained 47, we are going to turn our work and then we are going right back into our repeats. So we're going to start in the second chain from the hook and we are going to single crochet for 16. So I'm sure this is very familiar because we're just doing the second leg now. So now after doing the single crochets for the 16 stitches, we are going to do the uh, half double crochets in the back loop only until the last 10 stitches. So we'll do 58 of those until the last 10 stitches where we will do the single crochet only in the, in the back loop only. So now after doing this first row, the second section, we're going to turn and we're going to do the same thing we did for the first section. So we will be doing those repeats and doing 30 rows again. So it'll match this first section. We're just doing this section again for our second section of these pants. So go grab a movie, enjoy doing that second section, and then come on back. And now we have this second section done and it's time for us to do this, uh, the rows between the legs again for this side. But notice we have ended down here and this is at the bottom cuff of the pants. So what we will need to do this time is go ahead and fasten off your yarn here and then we're going to turn our work. And for this size, we are going to skip the first 46 stitches and then attach our yarn. And now since we are working this in the back loops only, I'm simply going to do a slip stitch to join and a chain one to get started for this stitch. And so for the remaining stitches of this row, which will be a total of 28 half double crochets and then 10 single crochet stitches all in the back loop only. I'll be doing that from this point over. 
So this way we're working the same um, amount of stitches that we did over here. So we're just mimicking this section here between the legs. We're doing it again on this side. And now after doing that first row for the rows between the legs, we're going to go ahead and turn our work and then we will be doing two more rows. So we'll start this row by working single crochet stitches in the first 10 stitches in the back loop only, and then we will half double crochet into the next 28 stitches. And then we will turn and do row one again from this section and then we will be able to fasten off. So these are the last three rows you have for these pants. We are almost finished. So now we have this funny little shape that kind of looks like pants, and it's time for us to do some slip stitching to seam these together so we don't have to do it by hand. We can slip stitch these um, edges together. So we're going to go ahead and fold in our sides, matching up the section between the legs here, and then we'll fold in the other side. And the way that the seaming is going to go is we're going to start where we already have our yarn. So we did not fasten off and we can go ahead and start from this section and we're going to seam down here, which will be the back of the pants. And then once we get to this area, we're actually going to start seaming together one leg and then we'll come back and we'll seam together the other leg and across the stitches between the legs. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my crochet hook and then we are going to be seaming together. Now, the way I do this is that we're actually looking at the wrong side of the fabric here. I'm gonna flip it inside out once I'm done, but we will start by inserting our crochet hook into the first stitch, and then we're going to go right into that first loop, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on the hook. And then through the back loop only, we're gonna go through the back loop only, we're going to grab the next stitch on this other side, and then we're going to yarn over and slip stitch all of those together. So I have zoomed in a bit so you can see this a bit closer, but I'm going to go through the back loop only of my current row. Then I'm going to grab a loop from my first starting row, yarn over and slip stitch together. And we will do that all the way down this back part of the pants. And then once you get to this part, I'm gonna show you how to do that to finish off one leg down one side. So we're just slip stitching through the back loop only of the row right here. And then our first row, we're just simply gonna grab a loop and slip stitch everything together. So now that we have slip stitched together this back seam from here to here, now we're at the point where we have are going to start working down one leg. We're not gonna work the stitches in between the legs right now. So for our next stitch, we're simply going to be working from the back loop only, from the point of the fabric the farthest away from us, and then continue to work through the loop of this row that was our first row. So I'm simply gonna kind of pinch this together. I'm gonna to grab the first stitch of the pant leg through the back loop only, grab the loop from the very first row, yarn over and slip stitch together. See how this just kind of comes together nicely. And then we are going to work through the back loop only, grab a loop from the first row, and now we're gonna work that all the way down this pant leg, all the way down the cuff. So now that we've gotten to the end of our first leg, we can go ahead and fasten off and weave in that end, and then we're gonna come back and do the other leg. So now the last seaming we need to do, we'll be starting at the other pant leg on the cuff and we're gonna work our way up and over between these stitches between the legs. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn. And this time we are going to be working through the um, stitches that are from the first row of this side and then through the front loop only from the, fabric farthest away from us. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to join. I like to do a little chain there just so it doesn't come undone. It's not noticeable. And then I'm gonna go through the next loop and then through the front loop only of the fabric farther away from me. And we are going to do that all the way across. And then when we get to here, I'll come on back, but let me zoom in for a closer look. 
So when we are working these stitches on the other pant leg, we're going to go through the loop from the first side, and then we're going through the front loop only from the fabric farthest away from us. And that's what we will be working all the way along this pant leg. Slip stitching those together. Now, as we get to the area between the legs, we don't have much left, but we're simply going to just grab loops across here, slip stitching them together. Doesn't need to be perfect. We just need to seam this up and this will be not noticeable at all because it's between the legs. So I prefer to do this other than sewing. It's just so much quicker. Um, but if you wanted to hand stitch these, you can as well. If you prefer to do that for your seams, I just like to slip stitch, making sure that I've closed any gaps. Then I can go ahead and fasten off my yarn and weave in any ends. Now, remember I said I like to do this inside out. So I'll actually weave in my ends and then I'm going to flip it to the other side where we can barely notice where our seam was. These baby crochet pants are ridiculously cute. I absolutely adore them. I'm making different sizes for my nephew as he grows. Um, I think they're super squishy and super soft. They're a great baby gift, or if you're having your own little one, or if you're getting a niece or nephew or a grandchild, these are so fun to work up. And I know he will be using them a lot because they're so squishy. They work for a boy or a girl. It really is gender neutral. And where it comes in five different sizes, you can make different sizes to grow with the baby because they do grow so fast. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and come back for some more fun projects soon.